Have you wished you could somehow band together with positive reinforcement trainers to drown out the voices of traditional trainers in your area? Well, then watch this segment. When Thrive member Sarah Monroe shares how she led a group of local trainers in a project to market their businesses and spread positive reinforcement together. Welcome to How I Did It, a series in which Thrive members generously share their best ideas, tricks, and stories for success. Because if there's one thing we've learned from Thrive is that we really are better together when we share and build on each other's ideas and successes. And that's what this segment is all about, showcasing the kind of innovation and action and generosity of spirit that makes Thrive what it is. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing Thrive Hive member, Sarah Monroe. Uh, this, uh, earlier this year, Sarah started and led a group marketing effort among a small cadre of fellow local positive reinforcement trainers as a way to promote not just their businesses, but also positive reinforcement in general. I got really excited about this project, both because it embodied the collegiality and community that we so love here in Thrive, but also because it serves our larger shared mission of spreading positive reinforcement. So I was really, really glad when Sarah agreed to share the story and lessons of her project with the Hive. Sarah, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Oh, so exciting. Um, let's start by giving your colleagues a little background. You are in sunny Santa Barbara, California, where you've been running your business, Sarah Monroe Dog Training, for going on seven years now. Uh, tell us a little bit about your business and your service-based niche. So I primarily do uh, day training and I work with puppies and dogs and I do leash, also leash reactivity is one of the niches that I fill as well as separation anxiety. And I also do online uh, coaching. Fantastic. I love it. Uh, so tell us the story behind this joint marketing project. What did you do and how did it come to happen? How did the idea come to you? Yeah. So um, I actually got an email from one of the local news um, online media outlets and it was advertising a marketing opportunity with them and <clears throat> they were beginning a um an, a uh a section in their online um news um their online newsletter or their online daily online news uh, like, like for, a magazine sort of thing yeah for just a section i guess it was a new section to their to their um publication uh that was called furry friends and they were <laughs> inviting um, those of us who serve our furry friends and their humans to participate. So, you know, groomers or dog trainers and walkers and vets, et cetera, could participate. And um, there were two ways to participate. One was through just sort of a, a panel ad that would um, shift and change with various marketing messages. And the other was through a, a, a Q and A. And it was for a year. It was seven hundred dollars for all of that, and I was interested in it. But somewhere, I don't. I'm not. I don't really remember. But it just occurred to me that I would really rather do this with my local colleagues, and that this would be a great project for us to work on together. And that instead of really highlighting and focusing on our individual businesses, that we could be doing content-based marketing, but talk about ourselves, right? And talk about who we are and how we differ from the other dog trainers in town. And um, in the market that I'm in, there the the people that the trainers that get the most attention are aversive trainers, and there is a handful of them. And <clears throat> while there are about five of us who are positive reinforcement trainers, and two of those five have been teaching classes in town for a long time, and they have a little bit more. Um, you know, people know who they are because they're. They're cla they teach classes, so they have more people in their in their they have more people running through. They do a higher volume of business. Right. Um, so anyway, I, I just felt like this could be a really cool opportunity to say who we are, to define ourselves, to distinguish ourselves as and our credentials, and to discuss our methods and our philosophies, and um, attempt to um, you know yeah educate people and distinguish ourselves set ourselves apart a little bit. I love it. I love it. And so you ended up giving I, you, this, this kind of evolved to have a name. 
Yeah. So, well, <laughs> so we did, we, we put together this, we all brought our logos together and we had this revolving panel ad with all five of us rotating through the logos. And that was pretty basic and simple. And we kept the message similar on each of that. So it wasn't going to be confusing to people viewing it. But the next part, the Q&A was it required a photo. It, it, it just needed a image. And so as soon as we had an image of ourselves, it, it became obvious that we needed to call ourselves something rather than <laughs> random training women with dogs, you know, so we, <laughs> We call ourselves the Santa Barbara Positive Dog Trainers. And, and we did have quite a bit of discussion about that as well. Um, and that was, some of us do, weren't totally thrilled with, with that just because of, you know, the complexities of, of what we do and what we call it. And, but that was seemed like that was what we arrived at. And, and we we're like, yeah, okay, that's pretty much the best. We felt like it was a good representation of of things vague enough yeah. and clear enough and upbeat enough. Fantastic. Makes- and so the Q and a, this was sort of like an article, like they like interview questions and answers that, that sort of thing. Yeah. So it was interesting because the Q and a was presented to us and we looked at it and said, well, can we make our own questions? Because the questions <laughs> weren't necessarily nice. relevant and so, and because there were five of us, we had to figure out how to represent all of us instead of each of the individual businesses, because that we determined would be somewhat monotonous to read through each one of us. So that's where we spoke about who we were as a group of trainers. And we were, they, the marketing person there allowed us to write our own questions essentially, or to choose our own questions. So we chose the questions that we thought would, um, best um, help us speak about ourselves. And then we answered them. And so it was, it looks like it's an art, it was interesting piece about this because it's, it has a byline of the marketing person from the media outlet, but we wrote it. Nice, nice. I love that though. I love the way that you, I love the way that you really took advantage of the situation and, um, and molded it to what you needed it to be, you know, that you, that you were bold and confident enough to say, Ooh, could we do it this way instead? And, and, you know, really make sure that, that the types of questions being answered allowed you to share the kind of educational content that you wanted to share with the community. And it just, just sort of a nice reminder to all of us of of what a a colleague of mine um, often says, which is, you know, don't ask, don't get, and there's really no harm in asking. And I just, I love that you did that. (laughs) Yeah, she was she was very open to to everything really we wanted to do. So we had a nice back and forth, and um, yeah, it was great. It Fantastic. Was great yeah. Now I know this is all pretty new. It's this has all happened pretty recently. Um, but any results you've seen so far, either for your business or colleagues' businesses, or for yourself, you just how it's yeah. been. So I have noticed. Um, I've had some response that people had seen it and said, great article, um, some reposts. The other trainers, especially the trainers who do classes have received a fair amount of feedback and comment. The other great thing about this is that the this will be up for a year. So oh, it's nice. good, right? We actually, the package that we purchased was a year long package. Um, so I guess we can. And you were able to share the cost, the marketing expense yes. for that. So it was yeah, so seven five hundred dollars for the panel ads, two hundred and fifty for this, um, for the Q and A split among five of us. And then we nice. also had a, a we did hire a professional photographer to come take a picture of us. So that was a two hundred dollar cost split between the five of us was four hundred. So it became a really really reasonable, um, uh, you know, advertising uh, fee. And, uh, and I think there was something else I was going to say, and I don't, you at, what was the question? What, how did we start? I was just to- asking you sort of the, you know, the impact that it's had both on the business or on yourself and. Right. Um, yeah, I just saw a post from one of my friends who has trained her own service dogs and she reposted the article just about a week ago on her Facebook page. Which is really oh, nice. I love that. I love that. Yeah, that, that that's the sort of marketing project that's likely to you know to have a long life and to you know to to it'll be so interesting to see over the course of the year how much that evolves and how much traffic it picks up and yeah yeah 
<clears throat> Fantastic. And, and again, I know it's all very new and that the group is sort of in the process of thinking about what you might want to do next if you continue uh, you know, to, in, in this you know, joint marketing and education effort together. What sorts of ideas have been tossed around as possible next or future steps? Yeah, uh, great question. So we have been talking about creating a landing page, uh, which would be a simple landing page. We're thinking simple. <laughs> and um, again, reiterating, using some of the materials that we've already written. We have, we have this nice piece of copy. So we were thinking about how, how we could repurpose that. So we were looking at a landing page. There's been discussion about a Facebook page um, but more focus on a landing page and a uh, potentially a vet card or brochure. There are a group of vets already who distribute the, our names specifically as positive reinforcement trainers. And we thought about giving them either a postcard, providing them with a postcard that sent with a QR code that maybe sent people to the landing page or a um, trifold brochure. So we, we that that's some of the discussion we've had. Nice, nice. And so the idea that this this <clears throat> since you've got veterinarians who are already referring out, giving them a more powerful way to do that, and rather than the the, the sort of um, almost confusion of all of the thought, you know mater materials from all five of you having this one piece that an educational piece and then that sends people to that landing page, which then kind of from there sends them to your individual websites based on their needs and what, kind of, what sorts of training issues they have and things like that. Is that sort of the progression you're looking yes, at? Yes, that's what we were thinking about. And, and in that we were discussing, we have discussed a, a chart with our, you know, our names on one side, then our specialties and little check boxes nice. so that people could reach out to those of us who they, you know, who were representing services that they needed. I love this. I love it as a, as a marketing tool so much. I also really, as I was saying in the beginning, I, I love the idea of your five voices coming together to be so much more, just so much louder in concert about positive reinforcement methodologies and, and, and just, you know, that, that choice that people have uh, in your community that they can choose you. I, th I think that's so exciting. Yeah, I, I, I do too. And I was really, I was really excited about it and very convicted. We had a short window to do this. I think probably because the ad came in and I was doing something else. And then I was like, wait a minute, what about this? And then we had two or three weeks to do everything. And I was actually wow. traveling during that time, but I got very focused and very excited about it. And um, one of the things that was exciting for me is as a, you know, as a sole proprietor and somebody who works alone and doesn't teach classes, it was really, I really enjoyed the collaboration and um, the opportunity to work with my colleagues and to um, it kind of just felt like a work on a larger, sort of more global perspective um, that was relevant to all of us and to dogs and to people and um, to do that with others and to, yes, to let people know that they do have choice. I, I, this, my sense is here that people don't really understand what the choices are and that there are other ways to do things and, and, are we need to be more vocal somehow. Uh, Fantastic. Oh, I love it. I'm so excited about what you have going. And so I know uh, hearing about this, that you're going to have fellow Hive members who are going to be inspired to do something similar. Any takeaway advice for anyone who, who starts thinking that they might want to try something yeah. like this in their area? Uh, takeaways. So advice, I would say, plan on a project manager. Uh, so somebody who can um, hold, you know, identify deadlines, make sure run meetings um, and be, keep things running efficiently. So a project manager would be, is very necessary. <clears throat> and also, you know, pro um, we're also polite. So, you know, we have a new <laughs> group of positive reinforcement dog trainers working together yeah, you just, you just you need somebody to who can like move things to the to the deadline, you know, yeah. and to 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 help assist there. Um, 
and uh, keep it simple. Start with simple project with a very clear um, with a very clear goal. And, and it sounds like having a deadline is a good idea too. I mean, I'm really impressed with how quickly you guys got that done because you had that deadline that you're working against. And sometimes that can be very helpful. Yeah. Yes, it can be very helpful. And it was kind of blew me away actually within 24 hours of communicating with the other trainers, everybody had responded. Yes, they were interested. And I've been wanting to collaborate with my colleagues in this town for as long as I've been a dog trainer here. And this is the first time we've really, I mean, I've done little bits and pieces with different one, you know, different, um, with individuals, but we all got together and we all agreed, yeah, we want to do this. So uh, there was, it was exciting. That was exciting. Um, but yes, uh, keep it, keeping it simple at first, because we also all have so many great ideas and people <laughs> come in with different levels. Here's another piece. I think so people come in with different levels of business experience. And there was, there was nobody in my group and thrive. Right. So there, there were a lot of ideas floating around. Um, and, and yeah, I, I would say identify very clear goals, keep it simple, get your project done, see how it goes and then plan, you know, step B. Wonderful. Oh, great advice. It's always good to start simple and build from there. And thank you so much, Sarah, for sharing this marketing project, um, for sharing this education project, uh, but also and especially for inspiring and contributing to the success of your fellow Thrive Hive members. Uh, love that. So appreciate it. And huge congrats on this project. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs>